Good evening, guys. Welcome to the Duke ABD Consulting Club Case Practice. I'm Ziping Mao, a second year PhD student in mechanical engineering, and I'm serving as the professional development chair at ABD Consulting Club. So let's get started. In today's lecture, we would like to focus on two advanced techniques to solve cases. One is called issue tree, the other one is called drilling down. So these techniques are commonly used in interviews and real consulting life. Knowing them will help you to understand the consulting language, that's one important reason. And more importantly, apply the knowledge that you've learned in the past lectures in a more flexible manner. So in the past two lectures, uh, we've learned the frameworks and the steps of solving cases. We will go through that very quickly to review that a little bit. So here's the outline of today's lecture. We will go through the frameworks case solving and we will talk about the uh, concept of hypothesis. Then with the hypothesis, we can develop our own structure, which is called issue tree. And we will talk about the flexibility of issue tree and how to drill down issue trees. Uh, to apply these skills, we want to use a, a very specific sample case to help your, your understanding. And finally, you will practice the case yourself. So first part, review. In the second lecture, we talked about the profitability framework. So this is based on a very simple equation, which is profit equals to revenue minus cost. And it is a quantitative method. Within this framework, you ask questions like, what is the number? Or what is the percentage? So it's basically all about what. And uh, there's another framework in the, second, in the third lecture we talked about. Uh, it is a business situation framework. And we have different specific situations, but they are all called business situ situations. And we have four branches under that, customer, product, company, and competitors. So it is more like a qualitative method. And you ask questions like, why do the customers choose our product? And how does the product work? So it's more on why and how those qualitative questions. And we distill the, the steps to solve cases. Summarize, make hypothesis, and get your structure. Drill down the structure and summarize your res results. Four steps. But how to apply the frameworks we learned to those two steps over there? That's the question for today, and that's what we would like to focus on. So first, we would like to talk about hypothesis. Very important concept. What is a hypothesis? So hypothesis is a testable statement, and it is a best guess based on the existing data. Talking about the guess, it doesn't have to be uh, accurate, right? And not even necessary to be right. But it has to be relevant to your existing data. Why do we need a hypothesis? First, because you need to talk to your peers and your client so that they understand what's going on in your mind. And secondly, you want to use a scoop of data instead of a huge amount of data. So you don't want to boil the ocean. You just want to solve the problem. And the third reason is this can keep reminding you of the objective and narrow down your problem, and finally find the root cause of the problem. And all three points will give you just a one simple benefit, save time. It's very efficient. But luckily, you are already hypothesis driven. A good example here is I lost my Duke ID. So it happens to almost everyone here, right? Um, so the data here is I went to my lab in after hours yesterday and used my ID to open the door in the building. Also happened to everyone. So this is the current piece of data we have. Based on the data, my hypothesis is that my ID is located in my wallet. So this is my best guess because that's where I usually put my ID in. And then you open your pocket and you check it. No, it's not there. And then you modify your hypothesis. My ID is in the jacket, in the jacket pocket, and especially the one I wore yesterday, right? So this is the place where you sometimes put your ID in. And you see the dynamics here, and you will check your lab desk and maybe lost and found. And it's all about probability. So you check the high probability places first and go to the next one if the first doesn't work. So it means that probably you don't want to check places like your underwear, especially you know, you, 
when you don't have a special taste. Uh, so you always want to check high probability places and uh, to neglect the low probability ones. Knowing about the hypothesis, next we would like to talk about the issue tree. So what is an issue tree? An issue tree is actually a structure you use to solve a particular case. And uh, we used to talk about the frameworks. What's the relationship between frameworks and the issue tree? This sounds quite similar, right? It sounds like we use a structure, but they are different. So framework is actually a wild issue tree. So it, it is very generic, and it can be used to solve a lot of problems. But there are something not perfect within the frameworks. In the le first lecture, we talked about, as a consultant, you should be systematic and you should be adaptable. You should solve cases accurately, fastly, and also in a client-friendly manner. However, a framework cannot give you the, the last two because it takes a lot of time. You go through a laundry list, and it takes a huge amount of time that your clients do not want to see. And of course, if you go through a laundry list, it's very hard to follow. And uh, the client is wondering if you know, he's paying you this money just to give them this kind of generic uh, answer. It's not good. It's not client friendly. But luckily, we're not going to abandon the frameworks we learned. We're going to adapt them or customize them. How to build an issue tree? So in my view, it's actually pretty similar to building a Christmas tree. How to build a Christmas tree? First, you have a star. You pick your star. You get a hypothesis first. And then you get a tree from the wild. That is, you pick your frameworks or your analysis from your previous data. Then trim your wild tree. So you trim the frameworks that you have in your hand or you trim the analysis you had. And, in, uh, and at the end, you decorate the tree. So you add very important insights to that. And that's, that will be your Christmas tree, and that will be your issue tree. You've already learned how to pick your star and the tree. And we have to emphasize here that sometimes the best uh, framework is not from the two that we learned. It's actually uh, from the analysis you just did. And how to trim the framework. First, analyze the situation you are right now in and pick the relevant branches. Relevant to what? Relevant to your current data. And how to decorate it? We do that by, do, by doing a lot of things. And you can just uh, summarize them in your practice. But we recommend two uh, techniques here. One is to put an interim layer to make it more client friendly and to add some customized items, which is not in your original framework. And you will see how to use them uh, in the next case. So after having an issue tree, how can we drill down? We can drill down by asking what and why and how questions. So still, it is uh, qualitative and quantitative. Um, we should focus on both sides. And next is, Go with the branch that with the highest probability first. And here we would like to introduce a rule which is also widely used in consulting firms. It is called the 80-20 rule. There are uh, hundreds of ways to explain this, but in our context, we would like to say that 80% of the outcome or the situation is caused by 20% of the problem. It means that if you, say, if you solve the 20% of the problem, you solve the 80% uh, of the situation. And also, you can recover the company back. So fi fi next step is to modify your hypothesis and uh, along your way of analysis. It, that it is actually consistent with what I said about hypothesis. It doesn't matter if you are wrong. You just have to make a hypothesis. And very importantly, you, you would like to finish uh, one branch and go to another one. So this is ab about client-friendly because it's very hard to follow if you jump around the branches. And the last piece, exhaust all branches that you had in your issue tree. OK, so now we know the issue tree. We know how to drill down. We would like to apply that to a sample case. So this is a still the case that you've, you've seen. 
um, your your client is a shoe manufacturing company, and uh, the CEO would like to see the reasons behind the declining profit and the suggestions for improving the profit. So we are recycling the case through the semester to give you a similar setup. And probably by the end of the semester, you, you all can be this kind of expert in shoe manufacturing. All right, so very exactly the same thing that we did last time. And profitability framework. So this is more on the quantitative side. So we use the framework here, and we have a hypothesis first. So the hypothesis is, so my hypothesis is the profit decline is caused by the increase of the cost. And you drill down the tree, and you notice that, OK, so the variable cost is the major problem. And you see here, this is the tree that we did not, we did not trim too much, because this is based on a mathematical equation. And uh, it's hard to modify. And we don't have to, actually. With that, we know the problem is in variable cost, and we have a new hypothesis. So the hypothesis is, the increase in the variable cost is uh, contributed to the profit decrease a lot. So with the new hypothesis, we have a new structure by asking questions like, what are the components of the variable cost? And the client or the interviewer will tell you, so we have four components, the raw material, labor, utility, and shipping. And uh, that's your issue tree, because it's based on your analysis. Of course, we, we, we probe a little bit more and see that the labor is the major cause of the problem. And that increased quite a lot. So in this step, on this slide, we focus on three points. Hypothesis, make hypothesis, pick the frameworks that helps you to solve the problem, and also how to drill down. So now we know the labor is our current data, and we will move on to a business situation framework to, know, to get more knowledge qualitatively. So business situation framework. This is the original framework, and we have um, quite a lot of questions to ask. But we see that uh, our current problem is the labor, and the labor is very unlikely to be related to customers and product, and also some items in the company and the competitors. So we trim out them. And the cost, so we see that there are three major components we would like to focus on. Cost structure, industry behavior, and the competitor's behavior. So we carry the three items along to the next page. And in this one, we focus on the uh, trimming frameworks. So in the next one, we see the three items here. They are all here. And we have a new hypothesis, which is labor cost increase is the major cause of the profit decrease. But you see that the three com components here um, is not in a very good shape. So you may want to add one more layer to make it more client-friendly. So this is the one that I add here. So I call that the first branch is internal, the second one is external. So in the internal branch, we focus on the cost structure. And we focus on the cost structure now and the cost structure before. And for the external part, we want to look at the industry behavior. That is, um, the labor cost increase, is it universal or is it just a our company's problem. For the competitor's behavior, we see the we would like to see the competitor's cost structure and also their rea reaction to this high labor cost. And on this slide, we focused on hypothesis and also decorations, the interim layer we added over there. So now we drill down the issue tree three that you, you just saw. And we see that, OK, so cost structure increased from 40% to 50% this year. And the industry behavior, the labor cost has increased industry-wide, so it's not a company-specific problem. And then our competitors' behavior, their profit also decreased, but not as much as us. And their cost structure is similar to ours. And what they did? they lay off a lot of labors. 
And if you probe a little bit more on the cost labor, the industry-wide cost, uh, labor cost increase, you see that it is because of the increase of the minimum wage, wage that caused this problem. So that's the root cause that we're looking for. Now you have another issue tree to give the solutions since you got the root cause. So um, the, it is still a hypothesis. We do hypothesis first. We can cut down cost without much impact on the revenue. So that's our target. That's what we would like to do. And uh, we focus on three major things. First one, the cost op optimization. Second one, outsourcing. And third one is what I call decoration. So that's the risk. In, and in cost optimization, we would like to see the manufacturing process, if we can do anything on that, and if we have to lay off our domestic laborers like our competitors did. And for outsourcing, we may want to move our plant to another country, so they don't have regulations for their um, minimum wage like us have. And the third one is very interesting. It's, about, it's called risk. So for the previous two, they both have risk associated with them. The first one is, if you lay off laborers, you may get into a kind of uh, trouble on the com compensation side, so you may have to pay more. And in the target country for outsourcing, they may have some regulations uh, in this kind of um, migrations as well. And it's, uh, it's also about the time frame, what's the schedule to, uh, turn, back, to turn back the situation, and also there might be some other, other costs associated with the situation, so there are all risks. This is a pretty good structure uh, for the solution part. And on this slide, we focused on the hypothesis and also decorations. Just uh, different from the, the previous one, interim layer, we used additional insights, the risk here. Okay, to summarize today. So, a good suggestion is always have a hypothesis, and we learn the steps to develop our issue trees. Get a hypothesis, pick a framework, trim your framework, and decorate it. And we learned how to drill down and exhaust your issue tree by asking what, why, how questions, and then modify your hypothesis along your way. And it, it, is, all, it is all right to be wrong, but you always have to have a hypothesis. Still, we still have something more to talk about. Like, in our sample case, we oversimplified because we just give you the data. But in your real cases, you probably have to distill your insights from the numerical data you have. So next lecture, we're going to talk about numerical data. And uh, in the final one, we're going to talk about how we can summarize your case. So this is... This is the structure of this master. We've done four and two to go. And uh, the last step, case practice. Again, uh, for, each, for each case practice, the estimation is about 30 minutes. And uh, we would like you to focus on giving feedback, especially the part your partner got stuck. And you would like to um, give them a pretty, pretty comprehensive summarize on this. And with that, I would like to conclude for today, and thanks for your attention. appreciate that.